Hi, it's Emily Lee, part of Art from the Heart, and in this video I'm creating loot bags for my son's sixth birthday party. This is the third year in a row that the loot bags have housed customized Lego minifigures, which I ordered from Lego's Pick a Brick store. If you're familiar with the Lego movie, this is obviously Good Cop, Bad Cop. I'm using the Sizzix box house and windows dies to create a hideout for the policeman, or perhaps whoever he's looking for. I love how sturdy these big dies are. As you can see, the box house die cuts both the base of the house and the roof. You have to buy the windows separately, and there are two styles in that set. You just have to replace the small magnetic square with one of the windows, and you're ready to die cut. The nice thing about the die is that you can position the window wherever you like. I can see myself using this die to create a spooky Halloween house, and even a decorated Christmas house. This is one of the most versatile dies out there. Since this is a Biggs die, you don't need your multi-purpose platform. You put one cutting plate down and your die takes the place of the multi-purpose platform. Next comes the cardstock, and finally your second cutting plate. I'll be cutting the roof in brown, so I only cut a piece of cardstock big enough to cover the base of the house. In order to keep all the windows in the same spot, I push down on that die so it doesn't move when I remove the die cut piece over and over again. Since I had to cut two bases for each house, the window die did move over time. The magnet is very strong, but after removing 24 pieces of cardstock, it tends to shift slightly. Now I'm cutting two pieces of the roof. Above my big shot you can see the big pile of house and roof pieces that are all ready to be assembled. Here I'm showing you how I applied score tape to all the flaps on the house. Since I wanted the maximum surface area to be covered by the strong adhesive, I had to cut the strips on an angle. I found it easiest to apply the score tape to the inside flaps at the top of the house and then the outer flaps. This way the angles were naturally formed in sequence and I didn't have to think much about where they were going to fit next. After applying the tape to all the die cut pieces, I can start to assemble the box. Each house requires four pieces, two for the roof and two for the base. I'll show you how to assemble the roof first. I'm going to make a valley in the center and two peaks on the sides. I'll do the same with both of the roof pieces and then fold the adhesive flap in the opposite direction. Now I'm going to attach the two pieces together by securing the long edges together. I put the triangle without a flap on top of the triangle from the other piece that has a flap. Then I turn it around and do the same on the other side. Now the roof is done. To assemble the house, I fold all the sections and flaps inward. I use the line that forms the very bottom of the house to line up the two pieces when I join them together. Next, I expose the adhesive for the roof. I fold the bottom closure flaps and push them far inward so the house can sit flat while I place the roof on the house. I simply press the roof down on the house and it's secure.
to create the wood slats that will go across the windows as well as bear the names of the kids. I'm using the building blocks dies from paper tray ink. I need four of these per house, two across each window, so I'm going to cut 48 slats. It's a good thing I can cut four of these at a time. I'll be angling the two like so. The child's name will go on the top and the word hideout will go on the bottom. I'll switch the direction of the slats on the other side of the house to give it variation. One of the reasons why I'm doing this is to block out most of the window openings so the smaller pieces of Lego don't fall out of the box. When all the slats are die cut, I use the simple alphabet stamp set from Paper Tray Ink to spell out hideout as well as each child's name. I also used the stamp set last year to customize the loot boxes for my son's party. When the word is complete, I stamp it out on a piece of scrap paper to make sure it's lined up nicely. I make a couple of adjustments until I'm happy with the way it looks and then go ahead and stamp it 24 times on the die cut slots. Once that's done, I can start on the kids' names and I'll stamp two of each name, one for each side of the house. Since there's no apostrophe in this set, I leave a larger space between the end of the name and the S. Then I use a Copic Multiliner to write in the apostrophe. I use micro glue dots, one on each end of the slat, to adhere them to the house. As I mentioned before, the slats are in opposite directions from one side of the house to the other. I won't be showing you every single name, but I'll be making a few, including the assembly of each house, just as a reminder of how easy these were to make. I think the most time-consuming part of it was the folding and assembling of each house with its roof. Two of the girls had longer names that wouldn't fit on the original slot, so I had to use the longer dies from the same set. These ones hang over the edge of the house, but that's okay. Now for the close-up of what's inside these loot boxes. Last year we recreated the Lego character Chase McCain. The girls got a female version with long hair. The accessories were a police dog, megaphone, and handcuffs. This year we just stuck to one version of Good Cop, Bad Cop, with handcuffs and a walkie-talkie. To complete the loot bags, I just had to make sure that there were six different pieces in each one. After closing the box, I wasn't confident that the pieces wouldn't come out, so I decided to apply a glue dot underneath the flaps to make sure it stayed closed. Since I'm near the end of my video, I thought I'd show you the cop outside the hideout. I love seeing all of these houses together. It would be a lot of fun to create an entire city block of houses. Here's one last look at the house. I love all the detailing on it, from the peaks and valleys on the roof to the cute little windows. I can tell you in hindsight that the Lego minifigure was a huge hit. 
Most of the kids ripped open their boxes and assembled it before leaving the building. One other thing I want to show you before signing off is a quick and easy way to convert these boxes after the toy has been removed. Simply cut off the closure flaps and the house stands nice and flat on the table. That way you can hide a toy inside the house and play a memory game. Please refer to the supply links below if you're interested in any of the products I used in this video. You can also visit my blog for stills and more information about my work. Thanks so much for watching.